I do want to start off by saying thank you. Um, thank you to your organizations. Why? Because I think a great organization understands the value of learning and the learning opportunities it provides its employees. I get a lot of that at Tableau, and I truly value that. Thank you to your families as well. I know it's hard for me to leave my family. Every time I leave, I have to explain it to my daughters, at least my, especially my younger one, who's like, why do you have to go there? Why do you have to travel? And I tell her, this is like school for me. This is a learning platform for me. Not only do I want to be here, I actually need to be here. And thank you to all of you for choosing this session, even if you were just wandering by. I want to make sure that this is impactful for you as well. We'll start off by sharing my name, Lavkesh Babar. I live in the Bay Area. Um, and I actually feel very fortunate to be part of a group that serves some of the largest enterprises, some of the biggest names that you'll hear in technology. And when they push our platform to do certain things, I get a lot of learning from that. And that's what I hope to provide to you. I want to make sure that this hour is very impactful for you. You leave with some knowledge. And how I intend to do that is by presenting a lot of things that I've gathered over the years in terms of tips and tricks. What best practices do I want to apply? And how do I actually go about it? I've been brought into many uh, situations where somebody says, here's a slow dashboard. Can you tell me what should I do? And I say, there's 50 things you can do. But let's see, how do I prioritize that? So I will leave or leave behind for you as a checklist, like here's the order in which I process things, how to make them faster. And hopefully, you can use that as well. Um, story behind Tordi short for tortoise, is, uh, and story actually has a story and a message as well. Um, this is the day we brought my younger daughter, our younger daughter, back home. And my elder one, I think, is trying to just feel if she is for real. Right? <laughs> is it just a doll? She's going to get to keep it. And that day, Tori came to our house as well, actually came with a book, The Foolish Tortoise. And uh, over the years, as they grew up, my elder one actually gave Tori to my younger one. I don't know when it happened. There's no story behind that. But she did give Tori to my younger one. My younger one, who is now eight years old, this is not when she is eight. This is maybe just playing with a toy tortoise. I think she's giving a bath with air, if that's possible. Uh, but that's my younger one. They're both grown up. This is from last week. They're eight and 10 have their love for animals. My younger one loves Tori. She wants to go to sleep with Tori every night, except when I travel. She wants Tori to travel with me. So this is a picture from last year. Tori and Trini are just kind of hanging out, and I have to send these pictures to show, like, hey, they were having a good time as well. <laughs> and Tori also goes to places with special relevance. Why is because Tori's message to you is slow and steady works, but when it comes to dashboard performance, try relaying that message to your execs. <laughs> it doesn't work. So what we want to do today is how do we actually make certain things that are not happening fast automatically? Because over the course of us developing something, maybe we did certain things that we don't know. Right, so how do we make that better? But before I do that, let me just spend a few minutes just kind of talking about why does it matter? You probably all will say, OK, we get it, why it matters. But actually, I want you to kind of think about it just a little bit differently. Let's go back 20 years back. This is not a picture from 20 years ago, because then you'll say, you haven't aged a day. This is, uh, this is from our uh, conference in Austin. Um, but if you look at this picture 20 years ago, I don't think it was cool to take a picture like that. I think a lot of people might be like, that's geeky. That's nerdy. Fast forward to today, I think a lot of us are just proud to be called data geeks. Data's the new cool, right? Data's the new fill in the blank, the new currency, the new oil, the new competitive advantage, the new whatever you call it. Why is that? Data was always there. 
is because now we have platforms like Tableau that bring the stories that data has to life. You guys have all experienced it. And the stories that we bring to life can be many stories. It can be stories like my work history. I like to play around with Tableau and you know just kind of plot some things. It could be my electricity usage. We did something good three years ago. It could be just me playing with sports data and just see which players are truly rising above the rest. But regardless of the story that we tell with the data, this is what I say. Every data story should be truthful, purposeful, and engaging. How do we make it engaging? We make it engaging by giving them the speed of thought analysis, right? Somebody does the slicing and dicing, things they weren't doing 20 years ago. They just needed a report. But now that we have the platforms, right, how do we make it engaging for them? Engaging is the part we're going to focus on for majority of the session. When I did this session last year, I actually said this. And I said that if you are creating a dashboard, show of hands, how many of you actually do create dashboards? And that's part of your maybe daily job. Right? And that's why you're here. Thank you for that. So when you do do that, I said, one size does not fit all. What I meant by that was, let's not try to cram every single thing that we're trying to do with our data, like our state of the business, into one single dashboard. Let's not do that. Let's make those purposeful. Let's make a dashboard for a purpose, another dashboard for a purpose. And sometimes you're like, yeah, we have 20,000 or 200 different dashboards in our company. We're not just creating one. I get that. But that principle, every now and then, remind yourself, why did we start creating something? Right? Go back to that thought process of take away everything that you think is not meaning, meeting the original design principle, why we started creating it. I end up going in this journey, and I say, what if I did this? What if I showed this? What if I showed this? And there's a point in my journey I've created 20 sheets. Right? You're nodding. I've created that because I think all of that is so useful. No, actually go back and think about the original design, why you were building that, and then start introducing some things. Some of those still may be useful, but maybe for a different audience in a different dashboard. I actually changed this this year or added to it, and I said one path does not fit all. This has sort of been a revelation for me just over the last year or so. What I mean by that is if you think about platforms, the platforms that allow you to do whatever you want, however you want. Think Amazon. I want to buy from somebody, a nobody. But as long as the reviews are good, I'm OK. A consumer and a, and a producer are connected with this platform in no, you know, ways we didn't imagine before. Facebook, seven out of top 10 companies today are classified as platform companies. Wasn't the case 10 years ago. These platforms that allow you, us to do whatever we want, however we want, whenever we want. Here's an example, right? What does Tableau platform allow you to do? I'm going to just click through it. I might have my data. I'm pumping into data warehouse. I use tool like Tableau Desktop, create some fancy visual, push it on Tableau server. That's great. I push it out. People can use it through mobile, through a browser, or through an embedded portal. That's awesome. That's what Gartner calls mode one analytics. Right? That's table stakes. That's something we've been doing. Right? A lot of times in different sessions, you'll hear about traditional BI and modern BI. There's in some ways that traditional BI. This is not something traditional, not in a bad way. Traditional isn't this is what we've been doing. We don't want to get rid of this. But we also want to be able to do what today's analysts are doing. You are the creator of this analyst. You are the explorers of finding these hidden insights that somebody said, go find something cool with this data. You're a data analyst, figure something out. How do you do that? One path may be, I'm just going against maybe some data lake, right? And then I use prep. Anybody here use Tableau prep? Some of you. Look at it. It's an incredible tool for me to kind of visually transform data, visually combine data, create different aggregates, if you will. Clean data by simply typing a new value on top of the old value. With recommendations coming in saying, hey, you look like you have these state names. You want to apply the logic that I would want to recommend. And if there's any misspellings, I can quickly show that. That's a visual way of doing data preparation.
But I do that, but instead of pushing a Tableau server visual, I might just publish a Tableau data source. Why? Because other people who want to use this curated data set, they can use it through something called web edit. Quick show of hands, who knows what web edit is? It's basically desktop in the browser. This is my go-to before I even got, go to desktop. There are certain things that only desktop can do, but if you're there, that's great. But web edit, ask data. I can simply just start asking questions through a Google-like interface. That's a different mode. That's a mode where you're finding those hidden insights. That's where you're doing that exploration a whole lot faster. Why this is important is because that's not just the one way. I'm not going to explain the third one. But there are so many different ways of this wandering with the data that we are doing today. And why I think it's relevant is because when you're creating dashboards and pushing it out, think about what the consumers of that analytics are going to do. They have the same mindset. They want to slice and dice. So have you actually gone through every single permutation combination of that filter when you designed it? No. But just put yourself in the thought process. I'm not asking you to try every combination, but know that what you put out there, you're not going to be sitting next with every single person and say, let me show you how to use this. But because they're going to use it in different ways, we have to just go in a different mindset. And that mindset can end up creating things like an executive dashboard. Very minimalistic, shows you a couple of things. Very simple filtering mechanism or an ad hoc analysis where I have drop downs where I can categorize it by any category, right? Or something like as data, or this one is my favorite of all. This is a favorite customer of mine where they do Tableau, which becomes backbone of their embedded touchscreen technology. They have a room about maybe as wide as this, where they're getting real-time visibility into their supply chain. So when you get this session later on, there's a link to a video you can watch as well. They presented last year, incredible session. But enough of my talk, because I want to show you some of these things, but just leave, this is one of your takeaways. You're not just the designer, you're the builder. You're not just the architect, you're the engineer. You're doing both, not something we were doing 10 years ago. And because you're doing both, you got to have more tools, right? You got to have more tools to understand what's really going on. So I want to show you this first tool. How many of you know this option that exists in Tableau? Start performance recording. OK, about 42%. How many don't is the inverse. If you don't know this and you're creating dashboards and you know that you have performance issues, this is incredibly helpful. Go there, and Tableau will actually record every single interaction you have from the point you click start. So we're going to do that. From here on, my, my spiel is done. I'm going to show you the, the, the tips and the tricks that I talked about. But once I do that, I have a lot of data at my disposal. This is going to be the takeaway for you at the end, if I can zoom this right, right. I want to kind of give you an understanding of what should you increase, what should you decrease, how do I actually deal with many of these performance issues. That's your checklist. It's on Tableau Public. So towards the end of the session, we're going to come to that and how do you get to that. So hopefully you can use it as a checklist that you print out, not for every single analysis that you do, but at least for dashboards that are for wider consumption. I've done a lot of things. Let me just go to the checklist and see what can I do to make it better, right? That's the intent behind this. We're going to switch to live demo here. And we're going to do a lot of things in Tableau. So this is a dashboard. You feel like it's all good. And I'm just going to go ahead F5. I'm going to tell you another story as this is coming up. You're going to experience sort of a very painful thing. It should take longer than that. Yes. You don't want this experience for anybody. This is using a lot of bad techniques. Why is, excuse me, can we do something about the flickering? Hello? Can we do something about the flickering? I don't know what's going on. It's not happening here. Thank you. Um, this is not the experience we want for our execs. 
So I get brought into many of these customer situations where I'm told, hey, can you look at this dashboard? And we look at one of the dashboards for one of my customers, and we basically looked at it, and I found one thing that's called custom SQL. Anybody know what that is? Yes? Maybe stop using it. <laughs> if you use it, try not to. Try very hard not to, and I'll get to that too. If you're using live data source, something I didn't mention yesterday, but I hope this is the one that gets recorded. If you're using live data sources against databases and not Tableau Extract, custom SQL can be really, really, really big problem for you. So we'll get to why, but try not to. Maybe that's one piece of advice. But as we were doing that, I said, is it okay if I just kind of move around how you created this data model for this customer? And we spent about 15 minutes reconstructing that custom SQL into Tableau joins, right? Dragging a table, dragging another table, creating that join, applying whatever logic was in the custom SQL into my data model, right? Okay, how irritating is this right now? Is this something we can live with? I don't want to troubleshoot resolution right now. Yeah, okay, all right. Um, but we did that 15 minutes of doing something on their thing, and then every single interaction that was taking 30 seconds to apply a filter was literally a sub-second. They're like, how did you do that? I said, I told you, don't use custom SQL, right? Now, why that happens is because whatever is the SQL, Tableau is basically, what is it doing? Aggregating data for you, right? You might have detailed data, and we're saying, let's see the top right. Show me sum of sales by product. That's an aggregation query. If you do custom SQL, Tableau runs that query on top of whatever logic you have in there every single time. Not really good. We don't want that. You know what we want. We're going to go through a lot of these tricks in 42 minutes or best practices. We're going to go through this one. And just to make sure that this is no smokes and mirrors, I'm going to hit F5, let it connect to the database and see what happens. Live demos always, oh, there we go. This is the same dashboard, almost the same, so we'll get to some points about what did we change. But this is same database, same table, same rows. We just implemented a lot of things we're gonna go through. Want that experience or we want the other one? Obviously this one. So, how do we do that? Oh, by the way, that story, once we did that, once we made the change, the lady over there who asked that question, can you make this better? She goes, uh, John, like somebody else that she works with, I wonder if we've been doing this wrong all along. Now, I don't want to put them to shame, but I think that was a moment of realization for me. One tip that I gave has changed their performance and their lives with Tableau Journey forever. So I'm going to give a lot of those to you. Let's actually start going through each one of those. Tabular data. Rows and columns of data with no specific purpose other than somebody said, I just need it. Can you tell me why? Because I've, I used to be a Tableau professional services consultant, and I'd say I would not shame them, Tell me why. Tell me maybe just two questions you're going to ask of that data. What kind of analysis that you do? Well, I want to know which product is not performing in which particular months. And then I'll go to the next categorization. But that, oh, OK, that's helpful. Because you've already given me two things, a product and a month. So if I just filter that down for you, wouldn't that be helpful? They're like, yeah, OK. So I can give you a cross tab, because that's what you like. But I'm going to give you a cross tab that has some filters. This will probably take a minute. This is putting every single row that I have at the order level into this visual. If I simply remove this and say, just give me top 100, because most of the time that's the intent, give me top 100 that are not doing well, top 1,000, 10,000, that impact can go from a minute to a second. So. Come on. Sometimes I don't kill it. I want you to experience the pain as well. 
Because if you're building something that's like this, every single person who's using this is exper experiencing this. So that responsibility is upon us to make sure that this is performant. Come on, be done. You made your point. Ten more seconds, and then we'll cancel it, because we made our point. Let's look at that same data. If I did 10,000 or 100 rows. Huge. Here's the impact of this. This will only happen the first time. It's going against some live data that I've stored about performance recording. So performance recording, I talked about that option, right? This is coming out of performance recording with some of the formatting that I did, I'm sorry, on top of that. But when I had all the rows, 32 seconds. I went to top 10,000 rows, five seconds. Top 100 rows, one and a half second. Think about the impact it can have. How do I get there? So let's do another tip, right, and see the impact, but also do a little bit of a troubleshooting here. I'm gonna go ahead and hit start performance recording. By the way, another thing I mentioned, did not mention yesterday, I wanna make sure I do. If, if the things are not fast in desktop, putting it on server is not gonna make it fast. Servers are going to give you scalability. If you have a two second response time, I can assure you two second response time on a server even if 10,000 people hit it at the same time, if I put enough capacity. I'm not gonna make that two seconds into 1.9 seconds. You can forget about that. So most of what we are going to do today is going to be desktop, but that performance recording can also be done on the server. Make a point. How do I do that? Google Tableau performance recording in server. You basically change the URL, you add a tag to it, and the performance recording runs as well. What really happens? I just started performance recording, how do I know something is happening is because now I see the word stop. So from the point start happens to the point when I click the stop, every single thing from that is going to be captured and is going to be shown. So I'm, I'm going to do a couple of those. I'm not skipping these. We're going to come back to it, but we'll take a simpler example. I'm plotting zip codes on a map. This is simply circles, and I'm going to do the same thing as polygons, which is Tableau's filled map. So in this option right here, you see this option called uh, map. If you don't, I should really use this. Uh, there we go, right? You see that option? Hopefully you can see it in the back, that map. That fills, so basically creates polygons. That means whatever the polygon is, however the zip code is, we know that, we're gonna draw it out I've been told that's a little bit slower. The polygons are a little bit slower than the circles. So I tried to quantify it, right? And I ran that performance recording. Uh, I'm hiding it. And yes, I did see that. There was a little bit of an impact. You probably cannot see it in the back. If I can zoom in, the longest query there in the bubbles was 0.3 seconds. When I go to the polygons, that was 0.9 seconds. Double, but about half a second for 40,000 points. Maybe I can live with that. Maybe that's okay, right? But how do I actually understand that? Let's go ahead and stop the performance recording. I'm not gonna do this over and over, over again. We'll do it one time. You see how to interpret performance recording, and then we'll go through the rest of the, the tips and tricks. That sound good? Yes? Am I going too fast? Okay, thank you, because I have to go too fast. I wanna show you a lot of stuff. By the way, YouTube has a feature <laughs> that you can slow down when you watch something. My daughter's been playing songs and they make it go really fast. It's kind of funny. But this is what happened. I did two interactions, I did a couple of things, but Tableau behind the scenes probably did 100 things. I don't know what they are. But when I hit stop, another desktop opened up with that data. How do I interpret this? A couple of tips. First of all, I don't want to care about anything that is taking points two seconds or less. I think I'm fine with that. I don't want to tune those point two to point one. I'm good with that. So now I'm left with a few interactions here. Which is the slowest one? The polygons computing the layout. That basically means I've ran the query, I got the data, now 
Tableau is doing its own stuff to create what layout it needs to create for you, the rendering piece. The computing layout for the bubbles, one fourth. How do I interpret this? I do a couple of things. Sometimes I will go into this events sheet and I will go and bring in this. By the way, the, the data model on the left is standard for the performance recording. So this is all the stuff that you will see, regardless of which workbook you run the performance recording on. Okay? So I'm going to just bring in that worksheet and put it in columns. Now I can see side-by-side -side comparison. That's exactly the snapshot that I showed you. That's one way I do it. Right? The second way I try to do things, if I have done a lot of different um, interactions. I started performance recording. I ran 10, 15 interactions. Then, then I stopped it. Now I want to consume all of that. Here's what I do. I go into uh, the timeline sheet, and I bring in this thing called start index, and I bring in as the first row. Why this helps me is because start index basically puts every single thing in chronological order. What did I do? Then what did I do? Then what did I do? As I'm doing that, it's easier for me to say, oh, yes, first I clicked there, then I clicked here. All of that data is still there, right? So I can hover over and say this was this sheet, and this was the second sheet. So hopefully that helps. Yes? Any nods? Yes, thank you. I want to keep you engaged. I know we are looking forward to the party. So. Let's go and start doing some of the other things that I applied to make that three-minute dashboard into a seven-second interaction. Um, we talked about the, the number of uh, data elements, the tabular data thing. But let's actually also go and go to a dashboard here. And here is where I'll talk about what is called guided navigation sometimes or visual filtering. I say if there is anything in the dashboard, a dimension like product, year, the country, the ship mode, maybe I don't need those filters at the top. Because if I have those filters at the top, that is another query that Tableau is running for it. A lot of people from traditional BI want like 50 different filters. But the power of a platform like Tableau is the inter interactivity, right? So what we did is one thing we took out was the cross tab at the bottom. We still have it because if that finance person or somebody says, give me the cross tab, oh, would you want to see this cross tab for this data point that's shining, right? The really darkest one. This is doing really well. So every May, we sell a lot of dairy. So if I click on that, I still have all of this data point, which, by the way, is 6,200 rows. It's a decent amount of cross tab. I would want to filter it down even more. But think about this experience, right? I'm going to click on June and poultry versus giving them the entire one. There's a few other things that are done as well, but that's another thing. Filters that you use can create a lot of problems. If anybody uses, I'm just going to keep some tips and tricks here along the way. Anybody uses what's called a relevant filters, and the way those show up is uh, this option, only relevant values, right? There is now a, another thing in Tableau called hierarchical filters. That can make a whole lot better performance than relevant. How relevant works is that a filter is shown you a list of all the values based on every other filter that you select. So if I'm selling only certain products, products in Asia, if I select Asia, every single other filter which has this option selected for relevant values will be recomputed so you have a relevant list. Hierarchical filters only work within the hierarchy. So if I have a product family and I select product family, show me only the products within the product family. If I select Asia, show me only the countries within Asia. So all I would do is create Tableau hierarchies. Anybody know how that is done? Drag a field on top of another field. Done. That's creating a hierarchy. So drag country on top of region. Drag state on top of country. That's you creating a hierarchy. So anything that you've created as a hierarchy, you use this option. Now you're not impacting everything else. 
So another filtering technique here. Visual filtering was another one. Let's keep going. So what we've already covered is tabular data, number of sheets. So let me just kind of give you my thought process. Not every single thing is, is a demo, so I'll just talk about it. My rule of thumb, five sheets on a dashboard. That's just mine. I'm not going to come chase you and say, seven, how did you do that? Don't do it. Seven's fine. Ten is fine. Fifteen is fine. I don't care. As long as you're aware that every single thing you're adding to it may cause noise, may cause confusion. If you're fine with it, I'm fine with it. Visual filters is another thing we discussed. Um, let's do this one, another one on filters that I think is really helpful. For a lot of people who've just started Tableau, what you'll realize is something that I realized. I was confused because there were just too many options of doing things. Every single thing that was coming my way was like, do it, do it this way, do it, do it that way. I found my way around, around how to do things. But especially in this filters panel, there were too many things I was playing around with. My nature is anything that I see, I got to click on it. I don't know if you're the same way. Add to context. I hover over data point, and I say keep only or exclude. I got to see how the, what, what the tool is doing. So one of the things that I've seen some people do is let's give it a few seconds to see if this loads up. And I will try to zoom in for you. There's basically 37 different values in this dimension. And the one that is null is something I don't want to analyze. Perfectly fine way to filter the data, right? I just don't want the null. If I go to location flag, which I think has a lot larger list of values, 1,297 to be exact, again, null is deselected. Me changing one thing between this sheet that you're looking at and this other sheet that you're looking at, where I've simply changed this and said null is excluded. This one change on those two or three different filters has this impact. One second versus four seconds just for that one sheet. Why? It's because the query that you're generating with that sheet is a longer query. That's how I want you to think. If you guys don't know what SQL is, if you don't want to troubleshoot, troubleshoot SQL, that's OK. Tableau is doing that work, creating a dynamic SQL that goes against a data source or an extract and creating the right SQL. But think in a way that, am I doing this thing so that Tableau creates the shortest SQL possible? If I'm sending 1,296 values in a SQL, all listed, the SQL is big and large. And that typically translates to also more compute on the data source or extract. That's the impact. Okay? So look at how do I use the filters in a way and put that on a dashboard that people, the Tableau creates the smallest SQL, so I create the right impact. Enough about filters. Let's keep going. I'm going to go a little bit faster now. Uh, we covered the zip codes already. Blending. OK, easiest thing to make a mistake. Who here knows what blending is in Tableau? Who here uses Tableau blending? I don't want to shame you, because I used to do it too. But stop doing it. How do you get to use blending? It's actually very simple. You could simply be on a data source, right? And I'm just basically doing some analysis. Sum of sales by class. Let's just see that, OK? This is against going against that database. This should be fast. What is class? The one that has a lot of values. So we're going to bring in a region here. So I like to do this against a live database so I can really show you the impact. And sometimes it slows me down. Uh, where's my oh, ship mode? Oh, we'll just take any dimension and replace it. This should be fast. All right, so here's an analysis I'm doing. Well, I got distracted. I have a bunch of data sources. And somehow I ended up in this, which was a copy of this. And all of a sudden, I create another dimension. I bring it in. What happened is that Tableau is trying to interpret your intent and say, you are combining two different data sources. Let me blend those for you. And I'm going to automatically determine the fields that you want to join on. How do I know that? All right, let's zoom in again. 
Uh, come on. You see that blue checkbox? Do you? I hope. Uh, come on. There we go. The blue checkbox is the checkbox that gets against the first data source that I bring in the field from into my view. And every subsequent one is an orange one. I would like, ideally, to see zero oranges in all of your dashboards. Alternatives, people say, well, OK, you're taking functionality away. No, there are alternatives. Cross database joins, if you want to write it down. That's a great functionality that came two years ago, maybe two and a half. Cross database joins, where you can combine data on the fly. That does do certain blending behind the scenes, but it works a little bit differently, works better. If you want to just materialize all of that data, like put it together in one place, and let Tableau not do this in memory, which can be slow, Tableau prep. That's part of the reason why we did prep, like prepare the data and just create an aggregate, two, three, 50 aggregates if that's what you want. Hopefully not 50. By the way, the worst case of blending, 22 secondary data sources that I saw. And they said, this thing is slow. I said, yeah, because you're using this as a data warehouse. <laughs> it's not meant to be. So just a, a thing about blending, just try to avoid it. Most of the cases that have been brought to me say, here's blending. Can you do something? I've been able to remove it. I can say that with confidence. More than 95% of the cases that were blending until cross database joins came, until prep came. So if you have like really old dashboards that are using blending, just go back and just look at it and see if you can make it better. Sorting. So sorting by another metric, sorting by default metric. What does that mean? Let's take this example. I took this example that really made sense. All of you here, about 200 people. Yesterday was 2,000, so it made it even more impactful. How many distinct first names are there here? Nobody's going to take a guess. Definitely less than 200, right? But how would you solve that problem? That's the same way database is going to solve it. Everybody with first names, starting with A, raise your hands, come stand in the line here. Then B, then C. Within A, let's see who is adding two A's. Let's Put them together, let's, and then, oh, two errands, okay, you're one group. That's how I count. That's how the database has to do it, right? That's how sorting works. And count distinct is the other problem I'm handling here, right? Count distinct, how many different names are here? Count distinct depends on sorting. Sorting can have an impact. The way sorting can have an impact is depend what you sort by. This particular example, Maybe I accidentally sorted by this field called long description of the product I'm selling. So how many distinct products that I was selling? That's how I want to sort this data, which has been shown by month and manager. Which manager is selling the most within a certain month, but they're selling the most products within a certain month? Maybe it makes some business sense. But if my question is as simple as just seeing who's selling the most, maybe in terms of sales, this is also sorted. And that impact of sorting was like 12 times, if my math is right. That's huge. Every single change you're going to make, it will have an impact. The one thing I want to say as I'm giving a lot of these tips is I don't want you to take any functionality away. I don't want you to say, don't do this, don't do this. They're like, why did you create Tableau? You gave me all of these options for a reason, because we want to do that. So when we get to that final takeaway visualization that's on Tableau Public, come on, don't do that. OK, there we go. What I am trying to also do, oh, this doesn't work with that. So hopefully this is big enough in the back, is that also has a little bit of that thought process behind. Don't do this, but you could look at that. So I'm leaving you some commentary here. Like, so if you're saying, well, he said a lot of things that doesn't apply to me. Maybe it does. Just lead through what, what I do, what's the best practice. If you get past six months of using Tableau, maybe you start looking at the pro tips that I have there. So for every single one of them, by the way, bottom right, out of control items, beyond your control as a creator of a dashboard. What database am I using? How many resources does the database have? Does Tableau have enough resources? 
sure, those are good discussions to be had, so I have commentary here. That's out of your control. High impact, must review items is that left one. As you go towards the right of this visual, every single new tip maybe gives you another half second. Okay? Should we keep going? We got 19 more minutes and maybe like five or six more tips. Is it helpful? Was this what you were expecting? OK, thank you. Because if you want, please do the review. Because last year's review really helped me. I was really nervous. I've never presented in front of 2,000 people. But I did it, and I got so much good feedback. You're benefiting from it. And so did people yesterday. Last year, I had maybe seven or eight tips. We're trying to cover about 15 here. Okay. All right. Um, connectors. So a bunch of things that I'm leaving. Blending, if you do it. If you don't know it, don't investigate. Just don't even worry about it. <laughs> like, let me see what was blending. Same thing with count distinct, which actually is a very powerful tool, using count distinct. So for that one, you're going to stump me if you say, what's your alternative to count distinct? I unfortunately don't have one. Just know that count distinct can have an impact. By the way, when I started looking at, I'm going to jump here forward and backward. If I look at this count distinct option, we're doing OK, 18 minutes. Um, this was one example where I was using count distinct of a different field, like I brought in a fifth field, count distinct of orders by order ID. Duh, the answer is always one. I have one order per order. OK. But I added that just to see if that has any impact. Um, and that particular example had no impact. In fact, the other one was better. And I tried to sometimes half a second here, half a second there, depending on what was going on in my machine. But they were always about the same. When I was building this presentation, I was really struggling. I was like, I really want to show the examples of 32 seconds, implement Lovecash's brand new tip, one second. I want to show you a lot of those. And I said, what about this? Should I not show it? Then somebody who was doing a review, they said, no, absolutely show it. Because it still doesn't have an impact. It does have an impact. But in your case, it didn't. So as long as you're using count distinct purposefully, right, and you know there is no impact, if somebody comes up and like another love cares and says, are you using count distinct? Say, I've already done my performance recording. I'm good, right? Just be aware, it can. Because that count distinct, the way it's going to work is sort all of you and then count. So if you have a lot of different products, a lot of different whatever SKUs, and you're doing a count distinct, it's going to be a compute intensive query. All right. Um, ODBCs is another one. This is the one that I will just discuss. Um, and I did create an example. Anybody here know what an ODBC is? I'm so glad very little people know. The rest of you, don't investigate. That's my tip. What do I mean? What's your alternative? Right? So if I'm creating, um, sure, let's just put in the password. By the way, that actually proves that this is going against a database. Just, just saying. Um, this will take about 10, 12 seconds. By the way, it was really fun to prepare for this because I had to run this like six times to be confident that, yes, this is slow, this is fast. Um, this example of me going against an ODBC added two seconds to an eight-second dashboard, eight, ten. I was like, that's okay. But what does that really mean? Um, if I create a new data source, this is that ODBC option. If the database of your choice, SQL Server, MySQL, Athena, Amazon REST, if it's here listed, use that option. Simple tip. Why? Because every single thing the database can do, Tableau investigates the database on the quick connection and say, hey, what's your capabilities? Happens in a few microseconds. Database says, I can do all of this for you, aggregations, count distincts. Tableau says, OK. I'm going to use the Tableau function of count distinct. I'm going to pass it to the database and use your count distinct function. If database cannot do certain things, we try to make up for it. ODBCs, we don't know who developed the ODBC, what capabilities it has, so there's another translation layer. Let's get rid of it if we can. That's my tip for ODBCs. Again, I'm asking you to unremember some of these things. That's part of this, like, hey, 
things we used to do before. Let's not do it today. Custom SQL. Let's actually dive in a little bit here. Somebody gave me feedback yesterday saying, show me, show me how this works behind the scenes. OK. This was custom SQL. I'm going to go and edit this data source. This says custom SQL here. You can take the call. Say I'm in a really good session. You should have been there. <laughs> I'm, I'm really joking. I'm not shaming you. Happens all the time. Um, I pasted this custom SQL. And um, Notepad++, plus, plus, or just Notepad++, plus, no, two pluses, sorry. Um, you can use this language thing, SQL, so it can just format these things in a way that I can quickly see. I used to be a, a guy who used to write a lot of SQL, custom SQL. I can quickly see there's aggregation going on here. Jumps out at me. I was like, why? Um, sorry if it's small again and it's still flickering. This was not the problem yesterday. But here, right? Sum of certain things. I'm aggregating the data. No, that's what Tableau is supposed to do for you. When you aggregate data in a custom SQL, here's another thing that happens. This group by, which basically is an order, way of ordering things. I'm going to create different groups and put that data in there. If I want to do select sum of sales by ship mode on this custom SQL, this is what Tableau would do. Select, uh, what did I say, ship mode? Let's just type in ship mode. And then sum of, oh, I cannot type today. Sales from, and then this becomes a big, long table for us. Data group by ship mode. That's what Tableau would do. For that one simple visual that I wanted to aggregate, all of these other columns are part of every single visualization. By the way, this only impacts live data sources. If you're doing an extract, if you bring data in, in some ways, it's just flat data at that point for Tableau. So that impact would not be any different if you had a custom SQL. But again, this is something that happens really easily because if you're migrating from another report in another platform, somebody says, the data for that report is this custom SQL. Plug it into Tableau, and off you go. Off you go, but think about the others who have to see that spinning circle, right? So reconstruct it. How did we reconstruct this? Left join, another join, some things are not null. That's simple. All, I, all this needs to have to it is we're going to switch to the data source that has those tables. In fact, I think those were three tables. I drag and drop those tables. This is a left join. This is an inner join. And I've implemented data source filters to exclude those nulls. Anybody know what the data source filter is in Tableau? It's only some of you. So let's go and do that one as well. If I've done this, anytime I'm using this data source, to bring in any field, any measure. If I've implemented the data source filters, they automatically appear in here. And the way you add a filter to a data source is using this option. What this means is that all the analysis I want to do on these three tables should use these filters. Whether you're excluding something or you're filtering the data set, right? So I implemented those filters, drag and drop the tables. Huge difference. So that's the impact of custom SQL. For that example that we looked at, huge. We're going to keep going. A couple of these are simply just topics of discussion. Uh, the data for analysis. So just use the data that you think you want to use for analysis, right? The right number of rows, rows, the right number of columns, right? Not every single thing. Because the more fields you're adding to an extract, the bigger the extract, the more processing Tableau has to do. Same thing for a database. The more things you, we are adding, the more we have to interpret the metadata about this. So whatever you don't need, the best example I can give you is all the description fields. 
all the long description fields, um, things that are, I think, anything bigger than 10, 15 characters, because that's typically a product name, right? If I have a comment, you're gonna analyze by comment? No, the, you do sentiment analysis on comment. There's a different purpose for that, right? Don't do this. So that's what I would do to custom SQL. Um, we're gonna skip the data model. Um, I'm gonna leave some cards here if you have some follow-up questions so you can reach me. But there's a couple of other things that are very worth the discussion here, um, just so we have the time to cover what I think are more impactful. Hidden containers just came out in 2019 too. Anybody know what that is? This will be fun for you to use. What is a hidden container? A container that I can click on, and it shows me things that it can hide. Duh, hidden container. Why this is helpful for you is because you can put a sheet in a hidden container, like the cross tab, right? And that button that I'm clicking could be an image, or it could be text. Say, you want 3.2 million data points, click here. You, want, you ask for it, but at least what I've done is all the other people who didn't care about that cross tab at the bottom with 3.2 million data points, they don't have to be impacted. So the hidden container, whatever is inside the hidden container, until you click on it, we don't render it, we don't compute it. I is gonna be huge. I have not implemented in some of the examples at my customers, but I really wanna get some like, realistic examples like, you had a cross tab, if you put it in a hidden container, how much better is it? So use it as much as you possibly can. If for some reason it doesn't work the way it's supposed to, send me an email because my, the product manager who is behind this, he's super excited about it, right? If there's things we can do to improve this, I'm gonna just spam him with a lot of emails saying, hey, make this better, do more things here. But I think it's gonna be great. I did do enough testing to be confident that what I say is what I mean. Um, so yes, all the filters that are hidden, those were not being computed. If I landed this in a hidden way, another thing for you, when you publish it to the server, make sure it's hidden. Because if you publish it as unhidden, that's the default for everyone. Yes? Make sense? Okay. Thank you for continuing to nod, because I know it's hard at 450, all the long day and all the other excitement, how much can you really store, right? So I wanna leave you with something where you can just quickly go and say, hey, here's all the things he talked about. We talked about count distinct already. Um, we're gonna start wrapping down with a couple of tips here and then bring you to that dashboard. Um, but let's talk about another one. Multi-table extracts are great for some very specific things. Who here knows what a multi-table extract is? Okay, do you... Do you know that you're gonna use it for a specific purpose? Okay, do you care to elaborate? Do you know what you might use that for? There we go. That was, would be one prime example of using multi-table extracts. For those of you who didn't hear row level security or multi-table extracts or don't want to hear, you're fine. It's functionality that we keep putting out for very specific things. Right, so how do I get there? What does that really mean? If I'm going against a database, and I use this option, extract, this is the option here, if I can zoom in again, single table, multiple table. What it means? Tableau sucks in the data from one, two, three, five different tables, whatever you brought into the Tableau view, and creates a flat structure. That's a single table. Multiple tables, you went against five tables, I'm gonna suck in the data for the first table, put it as a table, second as a table, and then when I need to join it, I'll join it at the time of the visual being rendered. That means the join is going to happen at the time that your consumer is running the analytics. That means there is a potential overhead. I've tried to quantify this and put it on my blog, for the role level security example, it was great. The extract was so much smaller and the impact on performance was minuscule. Something that was rendering in whatever, I don't remember the number, let's just say one second, it was 1.1 second. I could live with that because my extracts were so much smaller. But for you, others who don't care about that, 
stick with the single table until you get to those very specific purposes of using multi-table extracts. Let's go back here. Let's give you the time. So I'm gonna speak about a couple more tips, but this is where I'm gonna do what I did last year. Some people didn't like me for it, but I'm gonna do it anyway. We're gonna take a pause, we're gonna lock the door, and you're gonna do a review. I'll take the risk of you giving me a bad review because I'm forcing you to do it. You still can choose not to do it. It's really helpful for things like this because think about the impact. If all the people who were here just at the session today and yesterday, if all of you made these changes and reduced the three minutes to seven seconds, and if each one of those dashboards has, let's say, a total of only 100 views, which is not a lot for a dashboard on a server, we would have saved 10,000 hours collectively for your consumers of those analytics. Just what we learned today on one dashboard. That's the impact we can have by putting the best practices. So I want to make this better. You can pull out your phones, do the review, and while we do that, I'm going to open up the screen about how do you get to that checklist and maybe leave you with one other tip. And thank you for allowing me to do this, to put the review in. I felt like I should have done that yesterday too, but I did run out of time. So how do I get there? Um, I think we covered most of the tips we wanted to cover. Um, I did want to get to this point as well and just show you um, that this really is what I would say speed of thought analysis for me, right? As I, if I'm hovering over and clicking on each one of those, sure, there's a one, two second lag, right? But I'm, I'm getting what I want out of a dashboard, regardless of what option I choose. Um, choose the years. Let's see. So that's going to be fast. But there we go, right? That's the kind of dashboards that I want. So how do I get to that checklist? Somebody escaped. You should have locked the door. I was serious. No, I'm just kidding. OK. Um, you can find me on Tableau Public, public.tableau.com. And I think this is the one that I'm going to make as featured. Uh, we'll sign in later. So it shows up as the first one. Um, best practices for dashboard performance, the same session that you attended today. If I open that up, right, why it's on here and not as a printout is because I want to keep adding to it. If I think about something, right, each one of these has a link that says read more about that tip. Uh, oh, no, every, my tooltip goes away when I magnify. But each one of those tips will take you to, give me some time, I'm going to put series of individual blog articles on my blog site that will just kind of go through that thought process. If that's what you want to do, just read my blog. Nobody wants that. But at least this is a checklist that you can use. Okay? So again, just look for my name, and it should be one of the top two visualizations. Um, jump, jumping back here. Is there anything that's left? Yes, other sessions that are great. This was me today. Designing efficient workbooks live on stage. One of my colleagues is doing that. That is tomorrow. That's a great session as well. A lot of tips that he's going to talk about are similar. We have overlap on tips, but he's going to do actually implementation. I did a lot of theory. Like, this is what happens. Just think about that. But seeing even more of how he does that is helpful. Because I took you from here and I showed you a pre-baked pie. Right? I think he's going to cook for you. Um, and then this other session, performance tuning your dashboards, that's happening Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So today is Thursday, right? Yes, so there's still one tomorrow. I think that's a good one to attend. Um, obviously, you guys did the survey. For those of you, thank you. For those of you who didn't, still thank you for coming. Um, and that's the Tableau link. I want to leave you with just my blog link, if that's where you want to go, where I'm starting to push more and more of the, my thought process. Feel free to follow me. But again, I'll leave you with that one thought. Think about that impact that you can have. Right? 
And hopefully some of this learning for you is learning you can provide others. With that, thank you for coming and have a great day tonight out. Thanks.